Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at some of the changes to Mac OS Mojave. Now, in previous versions of the Mac OS, a software update was handled through the Mac App Store. So you would go and find any of your Mac OS updates in there. Uh, not only just software updates, but updates to the uh, operating system itself. And so Apple has moved that now into System Preferences, so that's a part of the main OS. One of the things you'll notice if we come in here to System Preferences, we have this new software update item right here. You can see I've got one update pending there. If I just click into this, it's going to go and check for updates, and so it'll do that for me automatically. And once it's done that, it's going to show me uh, any updates that I have available for the system. And so I'm going to let that run so I can just show you what it looks like once it's put it up on the screen here. Okay, so as you can see, I've got an update for Mac OS 10.14.1. If I want to see more info, I can just click here and I get this drop down. And this looks very similar to what we've seen from Software Update in the past, where you get uh, the information here on what the update is, how big of an update it is, as well as the information there on the things that it's changing. And so I can click Install now. In our case, I'm just going to close it. Uh, the other thing I can do is I've got some advanced settings in here. And so if I uh, want to just automatically keep everything up to date, I can just click Check on uh, Automatically Keep My Mac Up to Date. Uh, if not, I can go into Advanced right here, and I can choose what I want to have happen automatically. So I can say Automatically Check for Updates, Download those updates when available. I can also choose to just install those Mac OS updates without my intervention, or install app updates from the App Store as well, and then install system data files and security updates. So these are the things that will automatically install right now, or will automatically happen. It's going to check, and it's going to download, and it's going to install system and security updates, but it's not going to automatically install the Mac OS updates or the App Store uh, updates. So it's up to you on how you want to handle that. Uh, for me, I tend to like to have more control over the updates, so I leave these unchecked because I want to go ahead and monitor those. Security updates, those are things that I just want to have happen so that if something bad happens, at least the holes are patched. So it's up to you on how you want to set this up. I'll just go ahead and say OK. So once you're ready to go, you just go and uh, click on Update Now, and then it will automatically start the update process. So that's software update in the new Mac OS Mojave. Since we've been on the topic of software updates, I thought it would be good to show you the new Mac App Store as well. Uh, as you can see here, it looks very similar to the changes that they made to the iOS App Store. You can see we've got things like articles in here. So if I wanted to learn more about this, you can see I've got a whole article. This is written about Things 3. I can actually share the story from here as well. And when I'm done, I just click on Done. So it has those touches in it. And you can see it's just gotten uh, an overhaul, just like we see on the iPad, where there's uh, contents laid out differently. There's more articles. Uh, there's more information. Uh, the other thing you'll notice, too, is they have more uh, areas over here where it's actually sorted. So we've got things like Discover. We've got an area for Create, one for Work. Uh, you can see we've got Task Management, Calendar Apps, that sort of thing. We've got one for Play, which would be more of your games things for developing apps and developers, and then we've got categories if you want to select a specific category that you want to work with. Uh, the other thing too is you'll notice that we've got updates right here, and so even the updates area uh, looks a little different here with uh, the pending apps that need to be updated, those that are recently updated. Again, it's just uh, much more similar to what you would see on the iPad, so we do see some convergence there. As always, I can update an individual app, or I can choose to update all the apps, and you'll notice that when we update it, Again, you get the little uh, the little circle there where you can stop it, which shows that it's updating and shows progress. Again, just like we see on the Mac App Store. And again, if I hit Update there, it'll go through and, and do all the updates for me. So that is uh, what the Mac App Store looks like now on the new Mac OS Mojave. Now, another update that is in Mac OS Mojave that is a great one, especially if you've got applications that do this, is the Screenshot Utility. I'm just going to go ahead and launch it from here. And so you can see I've launched the, the utility right now. And you notice I have this little camera right here. If you look down below, you can see that I've got a taskbar right here uh, that I can work with. And so what I can do is choose uh, the type of capture I want to do. So you notice here I can capture the entire screen. I can capture a, the selected window. So if I just hover, I can, I can hit a window here and select this and have that be the screenshot if I select this. So for instance, if I select this right here, you'll notice that when I hover over, you can see that it's highlighting what it's going to capture just by me hovering over it. I can also do my own selection where I choose the portion of the screen that I want to select. And so I could go and just highlight an area that I want. 
to capture. And if I wanted to just capture this window here, you can see I can uh, do it freeform the way that I'd like to do it. Uh, again, I'm just going to go back to this one again. Uh, or what I can also do is I can do screen recordings from here where I can record the entire screen or I can record a uh, portion of the screen. Now, right here I've got options, and if I just click on the options, you can see uh, the various options that I have for this. I can choose where to save uh, the actual screenshot or screen recording to, and so I can choose one of these specific locations, or I can choose an other location and make it wherever I want. I can also do a countdown if I want to uh, for either 5 seconds, 10 seconds, or none. And then I have options of showing the uh, floating thumbnail, which I'll show you in a minute. It looks very much like the iPad. Uh, remember the last selection. And I can show the mouse pointer uh, on here or not. And so one of the advantages of not showing the mouse pointer is that when I highlight an area, then the mouse won't be on there. It'll just show the window. So again, these are just some nice options that I have built into here. In fact, let me just go with a five-second countdown so that I've got that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and capture this window right here. So you see I've highlighted it. So I'm just gonna click on it. And so you can see there's a countdown down here. And so it's going to capture it. You can see it's captured it now. And you notice that it's down in the corner of my screen. Now one of the great things about this is if I just click on it and bring it forward, you'll notice that there's my capture and I have all of the editing tools up above here. And these are all of the annotation tools that you would find inside of Preview. So I can actually do things like a sketch over it, you know, if I want to select sketch. And uh, there we go, I'm sketching over it. Uh, and you can see that I can change the actual lines and things here as well. So I make the sketch happen, or I can just go like that. And I can hit delete to get rid of it. Um, I've got uh, other options too. I can draw, I can also do shapes on here. I can do text. Uh, I can highlight a, a selection. I've also got my signatures in here. So if I want to sign something, my signature's in here. I can do things with lines. I can do things with borders. Uh, I've got fonts. And I can even rotate it and crop it as well. So it depends on what I want to do with it. Then right from here, uh, I can also choose to share it. Uh, right from here. So if I just hit share, you see all the different services that I can share it to. And I can also trash it from here or say done or revert. Now let's go ahead and demonstrate how the recording feature works. So the same kind of thing, I just double click on screenshot. We're gonna come down here and I'm just gonna select record area, which is right here. And as soon as I'm ready, I just go ahead and click on record. And you can see that down here, I'm gonna get a countdown. I can cancel just by hovering over that. And so now I'm recording. And so I'm gonna make the cursor big. We'll do a little motion with it. Uh, that looks good. And then to stop it, if I just come right up here to the menu bar, I've got a stop button. I just hit stop and you'll see that now it's over here again on the right hand side of the screen. If I just click into it, you'll notice that I get a different set of editing options. And one of the things I can do is I can play it in here. And so you can see there's my cursor doing its thing right there. Let's go ahead and pause it. Uh, let's go ahead and just put this over this. Uh, the other thing that I can do is I can trim it right from here. So right from this preview here, I can trim it and just you know trim the top, uh, and trim the back side to exactly where I want the clip to be. And then all I have to do is say done. Again, I can trash it from here. I can share it from here as well. You can see all the different sharing services. So I just say done and then it's going to save it for me. And it saves it right over here on the desktop. Again, because this is a video, it shows up on the other side over here, not in one of my stacks that I have set up. So that gives you an idea of how macOS Mojave handles both uh, software updates and uh, some of the great features that are built into the screenshot tool. And again, uh, for those of you that use other screenshot tools, you may not need to use those anymore because the one that is now built into macOS is so simple and easy to use and really just gets the job done in the way that you want it. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own Mac or software or need some troubleshooting help, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.